Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining again. Today I have with me Mr. Matt Palguda um, from Alutic, and he is a provisional assessor and has a unique spot at working with several large organizations in the past, working for a large organization now especially. So I'd imagine with Alutic <clears throat> being Alaska Native owned, uh, having many different subsidiaries, very large organization, very large enterprise, <clears throat> multiple different sister, sister companies. Uh, there's a that's, a that's a big undertaking. And so you're going to be very first and foremost, now that we have some of the assessment guides, uh, you've gone through some of the training yourself. Um, I'm assuming you're going to continue to get trained more and more. You're going to then take that knowledge and application uh, or <clears throat> that knowledge and apply it uh, to a Lutic and making sure that enterprise wide across all those subsidiaries and sister companies, et cetera, uh, that the whole organization uh, writ large is prepared. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, and one of the things out of the uh, training is that scoping is very important in mm. uh, creating your, your, your agreement with the third party assessment organizations and structuring how you assess the company. Do you create a lot of, we have a lot of uh, subdivisions, do you do an assessment uh, for all of those or do you group them? Uh, mm -hmm. So that the uh, creation of enclaves within the business, we have business operations, but then we have contracts that uh, very definitely have different uh, security requirements. A lot of them will be level three, uh, but corporate offices may not need any. So to creating those enclaves uh, maximizes uh, how much you're spending on assessments and the effort uh, required to reach the certification. Uh, if, if you have some enclaves that only need a level one, uh, you can isolate those. And the CMFC is designed to be flexible. Now, one of the things out of the training is it's not a gotcha. It's not a, uh, the intent is not for companies to fail, but to ensure that the uh, federal data is protected. Uh, particularly the uh, CUI or controlled but unclassified information in level three. Right, right. Which, <clears throat> so you bring up an interesting point of, of looking inwardly and looking at the organization and assessing the organization. <clears throat> you know, one of the, the bigger domains on that subject is security assessment, uh, which has a little bit of a misnomer in its acronym. Its acronym is actually CA, um, yeah. but nevertheless, security assessment. Tell me a little bit about that domain why it's important, and then we'll then we'll branch into a level three practice specifically. Tell me a little bit about that domain. Okay, uh, the security assessment is new. Uh, this did not exist in the NIST 800-171. So mm -hmm. this, this particular one we're talking about is one of 20 new controls. Uh, 171 had 110 controls. Uh, level three in CMMC uh, goes up to 130. There are 20 additional and uh, our topic today, the uh, assessment of uh, enterprise software or code created by an organization doesn't mm -hmm. appear in 171. So this is new uh, to the requirements. Yeah. And so let me, let me read that out. So we're going to focus on 3.162, I believe. Yeah. Um, and that reads, employ a security assessment of enterprise software that has been developed internally for internal use and that has been organizationally defined as an area of risk. So tell me a little bit about that. I mean, is it is it all just in-house produced software and coding? Um, you know, wh how far does that practice reach? Uh, give me some examples as well, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, here again, scoping is important. Uh, the, the last part of the uh, control uh, states that it's been organizationally defined as an area of risk. So in this control, the expectation is that you assess uh, in-house developed code and does it present a risk to uh, CUI data or if you're low, uh, uh, creating code, does it create a risk for access to that data? Uh, this can be anything from uh, websites with functional code, uh, internal website that performs okay. a function of internally developed scripts. PowerShell, uh, the Python scripts, something that you've created uh, internally. Let's say you're setting up uh, administrator accounts and you've written this great PowerShell script that goes out and propagates that uh, into your uh, environment. That 
touches on access to data and if there's an error in that code, it could potentially expose greater access than you intended to or it could be leveraged by uh, nefarious folks trying to gain access to CUI data. Uh, open source code that you've modified for a particular use within the organization or mm -hmm. code written specifically for an internal function. Now what it isn't is COT software, common off the shelf software. They don't expect that you're going to assess uh, Microsoft Office. Right. Uh, this is internal developed code uh, that's specifically talked about in this control. And it's not software deliverables. If you're a software company, you write code uh, and that's your product. Uh, that's not what's covered in this control. It's uh, internal functions, uh, th things where uh, errors in the code or weaknesses uh, could expose CUI data. And that's, that's the overarching uh, CMMC goal is to protect that, C that uh, federal contract information in level one or CUI data in level three and higher. Gotcha. And what are some ways, tools, et cetera, that companies uh, are rather using if it's a tool um, or, or means for assessing code and things of that nature? Where, how, what's predominant that you've seen? How are other organizations handling that? Okay, or if you were assessing a LUTIC or another organization, yeah. what are some ways that you think an organization might check the box? Again, we don't want to be prescriptive here. Um, right. Just some examples, maybe. There are three different uh, methods uh, called out in the uh, control and the assessment guides are available. Uh, mm -hmm. The, the uh, CMMC program is meant to be uh, transparent. So the assessment guides uh, that the assessors use are available on the CMMC website. And that's what we're talking to here today. Uh, the three different methods are uh, peer code review. Another application developer who wasn't involved in the development takes a look at the code and says, yeah, this, this could be a risk. We should alter this. And then there's uh, automation. There's software packages. There's open source as well as commercial or even commercial third-party services to assess code. You can do uh, static analysis, which just runs through the code, looks for common uh, errors or dynamic analysis, which runs the actual code and tries to break into uh, operating modes that are not normal. Uh, so static and dynamic. Uh, for small organizations or small development teams, the peer review is uh, very likely what they're going to uh, provide as the method. Uh, there's also open source uh, tools. Uh, the OWASP group uh, has some coding tools as well as um, um, some other uh, open source uh, Sonar Cube is one that comes to mind. And then there's a raft of commercial tools. Uh, IBM HCL has some, um, uh, Fortify is another one. So there are commercial, and then there are vendors that will do this for you. But you have to uh, identify this as a risk within the organization and determine uh, how you're going to deal with that. Uh, that, gotcha. that. That needs to be laid out in policy and practice. Uh, and that's what the assessor is going to look for. Uh, do you have a practice uh, that exists for evaluating uh, in-house software. Uh, do you have a policy? Do you have the staffing and training uh, for the people that are doing this? Uh, the two pillars of the assessment are, uh, is what the organization is doing sufficient to protect the information? Uh, do you cover all of the, uh, the topics in the control? And is it sustainable? Uh, they want to see that this is integrated into your organization. Uh, it's part of policy. It's part of process. And you can document it. Uh, they say audit. If it's not documented, it doesn't exist. So what they want to see is a, you know, one of the tests is look at an assessment uh, that was done. What were the results? And did any changes flow back through? And can we document that through change control uh, that these corrections were made? of the code. Uh, so that's that would be the uh, the complete end to end what an assessor would like to see of uh, where this is uh, uh, institutionally uh, embedded. Uh, yeah. Well, good deal, Matt. Thank you so much. Um, I think you've done an excellent job of covering the practice 
um, especially with your experience coming from Airbus, CGI, Cummins, um, and uh, and also spending some time in academia, uh, even spending some time with uh, the Harvard as well as MIT. Uh, you have a lot of experience um, and expertise in this, and uh, I'm really excited to see uh, what else we can do with you in the future. And again, thank you so much for your time and appreciate everybody for watching this. Well, appreciate your time. Uh, this one was interesting because uh, it's new and it's going to be a, an evolution, particularly with the uh, small development organizations. It's, it's something a little different. They may need, may need to work on integrating. So yeah. this, this was a, uh, a good one to review. I enjoyed this. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks, Matt, again, and uh, take care.